Hey guys, it's Greg. Today I'm going to explain the dbscan clustering algorithm. And dbscan stands for density-based spatial clustering for applications with noise. I would not blame you for being intimidated by that long name. No one ever says that. We call it dbscan. And the only important part of that is that it is density-based. And we'll see what that means shortly. Now, it is best explained in two dimensions. So I'm going to draw two axes. Imagine that you had a set of observations and we put them on a graph like this, on a scatter plot, and say, just so that we can have some interpretation, it doesn't actually matter what they are, but we're gonna call this axis height, and we're gonna call this axis weight, just so that we have some sort of name for these. If you have a different data set with many different variables, that is expected and okay. Now, because I'm drawing this in two dimensions, it will visualize well, but if you were trying to do this in one dimension or four or 10 or 100, then it would probably work as well. As you added the number of variables, it does start to get pretty computationally complex, but technically the math would still work out. Now, drawing it in two dimensions, well, we should have something like this. We had different points, and so we have each of their heights and weights. Maybe we had a bunch of people over here like this, and that was probably considered a cluster, this cluster here. If we have, say, another scoop over here, I'm going to line it up so that we kind of curve around here like this. And maybe we had some kind of other weird points that, that didn't fit quite as well, just to make it a little bit more realistic. Now, what we'd hope out of this clustering algorithm is that we identify the clusters. And what it would probably be is something very close to this, where we specified or found that this was one cluster. Maybe it got around here. It may or may not identify that point as part of it or not. Uh, and then probably this other scoop, actually I should do a different color, a different color over here, specifying that this is a different cluster. So we'd hope that it identifies that we have one cluster in purple over here. We'll just call this number zero and that we had another one, which is cluster one over here. And then the rest of these, we kind of hope that it uh, it just calls them noise. And so we're gonna specify that each of these are minus ones because they're just outliers. They, they really don't follow any sort of cluster. That's what we're going to hope happens. And if we do the DB scan algorithm, then it will actually output this uh, or something extremely close. If we did the k-means algorithm, whether you know how that works or not, it would actually not get the right answer most likely. dbscan is great with this kind of thing, and we'll see what it does right now. So basically how this works is we have to uh, tell dbscan a couple different things. We have to tell it uh, epsilon, which is a distance value. We have to set epsilon, which I'll call eps, because that's what scikit-learn uses, and we'll set this equal to, for now, we'll say 0 0.5. And we also have to specify this thing called min samples min underscore samples, and we'll set this equal to say three. Okay, so when you're actually trying to find these correct values, well, there's a way of optimizing and fitting that, which I'll show you in the coding video if you wanna see that. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna assume that we have some fixed values that you've decided, epsilon is 0.5 and min samples is three. Now what this epsilon value does is that epsilon equals 0.5 implies that the radius of a circle is 0.5. And so we could draw like a whole circle around like that. I know, not perfect, but something like that. If we drew that circle around every individual point, well, we'll start with this one here. So we'll draw that circle and maybe it looks something like this. And what it happens to do is hit three other points. Hey, sorry for this piece. I realize I need to explain this better. When I say the word hit, I don't necessarily mean that the circle actually hits as in absolutely touches another point. I mean that if the circle absorbs another point. So as long as there is other points that are within that circle, either on the boundary of it or anywhere within that circle, then that's what I mean by hit. And if I say that carrying on forward, then that's what I mean as well anything within that circle. Okay, carry on. It hit this point, this point, and this other point. If it hit three points, well, we'll just calculate that for now. And remember that that first point, that hit three with that circle. Now this second point, we'll do it for that. That circle, if we draw it again, happens to hit four other points, and we'll remember that. If we do that same process for every individual point, we will have memorized, and we can store that in the computer, how many different points that epsilon of 0.5 circle touches. 
So if we have that information, we have a whole number associated with each individual point. And what we can do with that is compare it to this min samples value, which is basically a threshold. If that threshold is set at three, then what we'll say is that if each point hits at least three different other points, it is considered what is called a core point. So many core points will be defined here. And although this may not be perfectly correct, I will say that this many core points are defined. We'll say this one and this one and this one and this one and this one are all core points. We'll say that this is a core point, that's a core point, this is a core point, all of these other ones as well. And I'll just circle all of the ones that are most likely core points. Now that we've specified whether each point is a core point or not, we can do another process, which is draw that circle again around each of the core points. So for each of those core points, we will draw a circle around them. We'll start with, say, this one over here. If we draw that circle, it hits these points. And now we are going to start specifying actual clusters, starting one in not green, because this green is not specifying a cluster, it is specifying whether something is a core point, we will start in blue. And looking at this core point here, we'll start randomly with that one. If we draw our circle, it hits all of these points. And so we will specify that this point is that cluster and all of the other ones that it touches. Now for all of the other core points that it touches, we're actually going to draw that circle around them. And so since this is a core point right here, we'll draw that circle. And then for each core point that it touches, we'll assume that those are part of that cluster as well. And we'll do that same process. Now for the ones where it hits non-core points, since that circle hit these non-core points, we are going to specify that these are part of the cluster, except we're not going to chain react and bounce off of them and draw the circle off of these ones. We won't be drawing a circle like this and seeing what they're touching. We're just going to classify them as those points. Now what should happen if you bounce around and do that chain reaction, every time we touch a core point, we'll bounce off of it and collect everything around it. We should get something like this, where all of these are assigned to that cluster. And then this one here, since it's only close to this non-core point here, and we don't branch off it, we don't chain react off of that, that point is not going to be specified as that cluster. This cluster is now fully done identified, and we'll just draw a zero to represent this is cluster one. We need to identify more clusters because we have more core points. So for a random core point, we start at one of those and start creating a new cluster. So we'll start calling this the red cluster. And since this is a core point here, we'll draw a circle around it. Maybe it hits these points and we'll color each of those as a red cluster. So all of these are considered red. And for every core point that that circle touches, we're going to draw a circle around that as well. And so since these are core points, we'll draw that circle around, chain react off of it until we hit all of these other points. And then these ones are going to be hit as well. And it stops there. Since at this point, there is no other core points, well, we are going to draw this as a one because that cluster is fully identified and we are fully done with all of the core points. We still have non-core points left over. And so what those non-core points will be specified as are negative one for outliers. So this is negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one. All of those are considered outliers. And that is the final result of our dbscan algorithm. This algorithm is density based, which allows it to find this nonlinear pattern over here, where this is one group and this is another group. If you were to do k-means, it would likely just say, hey, maybe all of these are going to be one cluster and all of these will be another cluster. And actually it won't even be able to identify the outliers either. dbscan is well fit for this particular data set. Epsilon and min samples are user defined variables or often called hyperparameters. These have to be tuned and you can see the coding tutorial on how we optimize those variables to get the best model. We also haven't specified what makes a good DP scan model or what makes any good clustering model. You can see that as well in the coding tutorial if you'd like to see that. Have a great day guys and I hope this was helpful.